Well, if you don't mind this morning, I'll wax just a little formal on you because we want to capture this moment for many reasons, and among them a tribute to all chaplains. I know for each of you, there is someone in your life that has served in that capacity. Many of you, of course, with military backgrounds, had a chaplain somewhere in your experience, and uh, I have had mine, and I want to reflect on those with you for a few minutes this morning, because this is for far more than just the few of us in this room today. There are hundreds of thousands of individuals dependent upon the work of their chaplains and the service of their chaplains. And so this morning my remarks are meant as a tribute to those very fine men and women. Let me begin by saying thank you, Madam President, for uh, your kindness in all of this and to each and every one of you, our members and guests for this honor. I'm humbled by it, and I'm deeply grateful for it. For me, the title chaplain has always inspired both respect and awe, whether it's the heroic chaplains of the battlefield, our incomparable chaplains here in the United States Congress, or the many other chaplains who serve in police and fire departments, hospitals and hospice programs, schools and other institutions. I believe human beings, as well as the social structures we create, are three-dimensional, made up of body, soul, and spirit. Chaplains deal with the latter dimension, the spirit arguably the most important or at least the most enduring aspect of our humanity. Now, not everyone agrees. In fact, some people feel that chaplains, especially in government service, are not just superfluous, but are harmful. In Newdow versus Egan, one of the many lawsuits challenging the constitutionality of congressional chaplains, Atheist activists claim that, quote, the selection of congressional chaplains has brought religious conflict, not only into the midst of our social fabric, but into the fabric of our legislature, end quote. Of course, worse things have been said about chaplains. Yet the Supreme Court itself has said about prayers offered by chaplains that, quote, the Founding Fathers looked at invocations as conduct whose effect harmonized with the tenets of some or all religions. Spirituality, prayer, and petitions to God are not only universal impulses, they are bound up in who and what we are as Americans, and they are inexorable features of American public life. We recited the Pledge of Allegiance today, and Peggy, thank you for helping us to appreciate that clause, one nation under God. Our national motto is, in God we trust. Congress begins every session with a prayer. The president swears his oath of office with the words, so help me, God. And the Supreme Court announces at every sitting, God save the United States and this honorable court. In fact, it was the Supreme Court that gave us one of the best histories of the congressional chaplaincy. In its 1983 case, Marsh versus Chambers, the court wrote, and I quote, the Continental Congress, beginning in 1774, 
adopted the traditional procedure of opening its sessions with a prayer offered by a paid chaplain. The first Congress, as one of its early items of business, adopted the policy of selecting a chaplain to open each session with prayer. Thus, on April 7, 1789, the Senate appointed a committee to take under consideration the manner of electing chaplains. On April 9, 1789, and take note, these dates are important, a similar committee was appointed by the House of Representatives. On April 25, 1789, the Senate elected its first chaplain. The House followed suit on May 1, 1789. A statute providing for the payment of these chaplains was enacted into law on September 22, 1789. On September 25, 1789, three days after the Congress authorized the appointment of paid chaplains, final agreement was reached on the language of the Bill of Rights. Now again, this is the Supreme Court speaking here. Clearly, the men who wrote the First Amendment religion clauses did not view paid legislative chaplains and the opening prayers as a violation of that amendment. For the practice of opening sessions with prayer has continued without interruption ever since that early session of Congress. End quote. The story of our military chaplains, dating back to 1775, is just as solidly anchored in the American narrative and fixed in law. So, if anyone had any questions, that's that. And I needed to get it off my chest and place it on the record. Thank God.